Hi, if you like the video, please remember to subscribe. Hi, I'm Rob from RobNonFoto.com and in today's video I'm going to be doing a beginner's guide to exposure modes, the different exposure modes that you have on your digital SLR or your advanced film SLR or your compact system camera or your bridge camera. These principles kind of apply to, to most cameras um, apart from really actually they might even apply to your camera phone. I don't know, have a look at it, see what different exposure modes it has. Um, but I'm going to start this guide to exposure modes on your DSLR with an important statement. When you take a photograph, uh, you're not even coming close to recording what's in front of you. Photographs and videos and films for that matter are a crude approximation of the physical world. We kind of come to believe that what we see in magazines, on our computer screens, um, on the cinema screens, on the TV screens and in and print is pretty real. But actually, you know, it isn't really. It's good. You know, photographs look good. Even, you know, like things with HDR, you know, we can get it looking, we can get it looking pretty good. But our cameras just can't record the different levels in light that we see with our eyes. Because our cameras just aren't capable enough to capture all that damp dynamic range. So let's think about the difference between what our eyes see and you know and what the camera is capable of recording on its digital sensor on the film inside it. Um, let's think about what our screens are capable of showing us, you know, our TV screens or our monitors, and what our printers are capable of printing, because it's all kind of part of the same problem. Let's imagine, say, we're looking at something really bright. Um, say we're down at the beach, and we're looking out to sea, and the sun's glaring off the waves. But we, you know, we can still see the detail in the in the waves. We can see, you know, the white foam coming off the top, and we can also sort of see the pebbles on the beach, and we can see the detail in the seashells, that sort of stuff. Because as our eyes are looking around the scene, not only can our eyes take in a lot more dynamic range from blacks to brights, but also our irises are opening and closing, aren't they, to let in different amounts of light. So that's really good. It enables us to see everything. But our camera lens, say a wide angle that was looking at the same scene, um, it can't capture all those differences in light. So what we've got to do with our cameras and what our cameras have got to do automatically in lots of cases is record this kind of spectrum of brightness that we see in front of us. If this is the brightest white and this is the darkest black over here, you know, our eyes might see this much, but our camera can only see this bit much. So which bit are we going to, we are, we going to record with our, uh, with our cameras? Now, our cameras do this automatically for us in auto program mode, uh, uh, um, aperture priority, um, shutter priority mode, and we can also select the exposure that we want in manual mode. But the way that our camera chooses the best exposure, and the way that our camera guides us in with the built-in light meter in manual mode, can be changed. And these are the different exposure modes um, uh, on our camera. These are the different ways that our camera kind of judges the correct exposure for a scene. And if we can understand these different these different exposure modes and for what situations, you know, they may be helpful, then we'll have a greater control over our camera and, you know, we'll probably be able to take better photographs. So, what is exposure? Well, put simply, it's the amount of light that enters our camera through the lens and kind of an exposure digital sensor or, or a piece of film. And that dictates how light or dark our photograph will be. So exposure is a combination of aperture, you know, the hole in the lens that lets the light in, um, how wide it is or how tight it is, um, the shutter speed, so how long that light is let in for, and also the ISO, which is how sensitive our digital sensor off or our film is to that light. Now, in the automatic mode of our camera, um, auto, program mode, uh, aperture priority and shutter priority, the camera works out the correct exposure for us. It looks at the scene, and as we half press the shutter button, depending on the exposure mode we're in, it will then set the aperture or the shutter or the ISO or a combination of, of all three of those to get an acceptable image that isn't too bright or too dark. And in manual mode, we choose the exposure, but the camera's light meter guides us towards that exposure. Now, 
let me say that again because it may sound really, really simple, but what the camera is doing really is quite amazing. It's making that decision about which bit of the light spectrum to, to, to capture for us to get a great, um, a great photograph. So it's looking at the scene as we half press the shutter. And then depending on the exposure mode, it'll set the aperture, the shutter and the ISO to get an acceptable Im image that isn't too light or too dark. So I, th I think that's quite amazing, is it? Because now we understand the fact that our cameras don't have the dynamic range to record the whole scene. It can't record the brightest lights and the darkest darks. You can't do it in one go. So how does it know which bit to record? You know, how on earth does it decide which bit it is? You know, how can it know what we want to see in our photographs? And the answer it's quite simple. At its most basic level, what the camera's doing is it's looking for an uh, average brightness. As cameras developed and auto exposure was invented and before that with, with light meters, the engineers discovered that for most photographs that we would look at and say, hey, that looks okay. If you averaged out all the levels of brightness and you put them all in a bucket and mixed them up and poured them out, you'd end up with a level of brightness that was about 18% gray. I know it sounds a bit crazy, but you know, it really is that simple. It was possible, sorry, if it was possible to take a photo, imagine like you when you were a kid. So you, you drew, a, drew a picture and you thought, yeah, that looks great. If you then smudged all that, the, the, those levels of brightness together, you'd end up with something that was pretty close to 18% gray. So all the engineers had to do, I say all they had to do, was build a metering systems into cameras that would look at the scene and adjust the aperture and shutter speed or later with digital SLRs where they could adjust the ISO. Um, so the average brightness was 18% grey. And your film or digital image would look okay. Now, if you're still with me, and I wouldn't blame you if you weren't, here's the reason for this video. Our modern DSLRs, and quite a few modern-ish film SLRs as well, have more advanced ways of coming up with an acceptable exposure than just looking at 18% grey. And these are the different exposure modes um, on your camera that you've probably read about in your manual or you've seen on the back of your camera when you're going through the menu buttons that way. Um, and that's the reason for this video, because as I said, our cameras go beyond just metering to 18% grey. Um, they can get better exposures automatically. And by using these modes, in really tricky lighting situations, we can still get really great exposures. And as I said before, it's not just in aperture priority mode or shutter priority mode or, or program. In manual mode as well, these different modes, if you like, affect how the built-in light meter works. And they can guide us towards a better exposure that way too. So, let's get started. Um, the first mode that our cameras use, that you've probably used a lot, is, um, is evaluative or matrix metering. Evaluative or matrix metering is really, really clever. It goes beyond simply searching for 18% grey. And instead it uses uh, a combination of lots of things. It uses the camera's built-in computer. Um, and it splits the scene that you see through your viewfinder or on your screen into lots of little bits. It looks at um, all those little bits and how light and dark they are. It looks at what you're focusing on, so which focus point you're using, what orientation your camera's in, so it knows the difference. You know, if you're taking a landscape shot, it knows that it should be brighter at the top, doesn't it? So it knows that if that's that way or that's that way. Um, and it will give it, as I say, it will give priority for, to the bit you're focusing on. And the an engineers at Canon, Nikon, Sony, etc., they spent decades fine-tuning evaluative metering. Um, so it's not just really just looking at, at the light. It's also looking at its own database of possible settings based on actual photos and super accurate algorithms. And probably, you know, evaluative or matrix meeting will come up with a great exposure probably 90% of the time. If you always shoot in evaluative or matrix metering, you won't go far wrong. Um, you can use exposure compensation, and I'll do a video on that as well, um, to fine tune the exposure. But most of the time, you know, you simply won't need to. However, there are some tricky lighting situations where you might find that evaluative or matrix metering lets you down, or maybe it gets a bit confused. Um, and normally it's in situations where there's quite extreme differences between the light levels on your subject and the light in the background. Um, usually where the background's much brighter. So where somebody's what we would call backlit. So basically you're taking a picture of something or someone and say the sun is behind them. So it's very, very bright um, behind them. But I mean, it could also happen where it's, it's very, very dark behind them too. 
So the next metering modes we're going to dip into are partial and spot metering. In partial metering, the camera basically is concentrating on the on the center-ish part of your frame. So when you look through your viewfinder, where the center uh, autofocus point, and basically round there in a circle. Um, and it's basing the exposure on this area by itself. And this is useful. Imagine a scene, say, where you're taking a picture of a person, as you just said, and behind the sun's behind them, and it's very, very bright. So in evaluative metering or matrix metering, they would probably come out as a silhouette. They would be too dark because the camera would look at the scene and say, whoa, this is well overexposed. Darken everything down to darken the background, but darken the foreground down too, and darken your subject. Whereas with with um, partial metering or centre weighted, it's also sometimes called as well. Um, your um, sorry, not centre weighted, partial metering. Um, you're just concentrating on that person, so that's going to work. Another part uh, example could be say, say you're doing a still life of a flower, and the flowers I don't know on the table, and it's lit from a window from the side. And you think that looks beautiful, and you put some black velvet behind the. Um, behind the flower as you look through if you were in evaluative or matrix metering the camera would look at all this blackness and go whoa it's too dark bump up the exposure so then your flower would get blown out but with um, um, partial metering we're just looking at that center part of the uh, the flower center part of the scene where the flower is and then you'll get a better exposure that way now the, the exposure mode that takes this one step further is spot metering so spot metering is really concentrated on that center autofocus point and you know using spot metering you can, you can get your exposure of, of something really spot on because you're <laughs> spot metering because you're concentrating just on that flower's petal that person's face um, but you've got to be careful because you've got to make sure that center AF point is over that person, you know, where you want it to be. It'd be easier to, to get it over, say, a particular dark bit, say their nostril or the, or the center of the flower where it's a little bit too dark and then you would end up with an incorrect exposure, incorrect exposure that way. The final metering mode that you have on Canon cameras and lots of others is center weighting. Now, with this one, with center weighted exposure, what it is, it looks in the middle of the frame as well. So it's basically it's, it's basing most of the exposure based on what's in the middle of the frame, but then it averages it over the rest of the frame as well. So that might be useful for certain situations where partial metering doesn't handle it, but you'll probably be going for spot metering anyway. An interesting thing about Canon DSLRs, though, is the way that it locks exposure. You know how we often talk about um, focus and recompose. So you look through your camera, you half press the shutter button, it locks the focus and locks the exposure. However, that's only in evaluative or partial meet, um, evaluative um, or matrix metering. Well, evaluative metering in, uh, in in Canons. In all the other metering modes, so in spot, center, and partial, it doesn't actually set the exposure until you press the shutter button all the way down and then it sets the exposure. <laughs> so there we are. I know this has been a bit of a long-winded video, especially for a beginner's guide to it, but hopefully I've given you a good grounding in how your camera works out exposure, how the fact that this is a, an amazing thing that it can work out um, what level of brightness it should be recording in the scene and how you can use the different exposure modes, not only to help you capture well exposed shots in normal shooting conditions where you're going to be using evaluative metering probably almost all the time but in difficult lighting situations where say extreme backlighting or where, where it's very bright in the background or very very dark in the background where you think ah i know that in this situation where i've got this person in front of me and i've got the sun coming down and it looks beautiful when i look at it with my eye but i know that if i leave my camera in evaluative metering mode and i take a photo they're going to blow into a silhouette Therefore, I need to flip over into uh, spot metering and meter off their face. And then you'll get better looking photographs. However, before I finish, I'd like to add a little bit about manual mode. Because manual mode and getting great exposures kind of come together when you're in tricky lighting conditions. Well, lighting conditions in general. Especially if you want to get consistent exposures from a particular scene. So let's think about the scene again where... Uh, let's say we're in open shade. So there's, there's a really tall tree, sunny day, tall tree, and but it's shaded underneath the tree. And we've got a person, we're taking a fo taking photographs of this person underneath this tree. Um, and as we're walking around the person, taking pictures from different angles, obviously 
their face looks the same all the time because we're in open shade, so it's constant light. It's almost like being in a studio, really. But the background behind them changes. At some point, it'll be the tree trunk. Sometimes it'll be the open light behind us. It'll be going from very dark to very, very bright. And so the exposure, if you like, the overall exposure of the scene is changing. And if we're in evaluative or um, matrix meter metering or any of the kind of uh, non-spot modes, the camera would see the, the light in the scene going up and down and then it and it would adjust accordingly. Okay, so you'd end up with uh, the the brightness of the person's face getting brighter and darker depending on what's behind them. But we don't want that, do we? we want a consistent look on their face. So this is where you're in manual mode. This is where you switch to spot metering. This is where you you point, put the center AF point over their face. You take your meter reading from your built-in light meter. You dial it in. And then you just shoot in manual so it doesn't change. And you go around and you get beautiful, consistent exposures of that person's face, no matter what the background is, because the light is always consistent. Now, obviously, if you step out into the bright sunshine or it gets dark as clouds come over, then the lighting will change and you will have to adjust. But I think that's a great example of how you would com combine manual mode and spot metering to get spot on exposure. It doesn't have to be a person. It could be a product shot, couldn't it? Or it could be a building that you wanted a particular exposure. And I think that's a really important um, item to, to just really get your head around and to go out and practice with too. Okay, so that's it from me. Um, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoy it, you know, please subscribe. Please put some comments down below. Um, you, you can email me, scalespeed at gmail.com. Check out robinonphoto.com. There's different articles over there. Please come and join the Flickr group. And hopefully, I'll see you again really soon.